Hello and welcome to German Grammar Pod. Today we've reached the dative case. One of the key things the dative case does is show the indirect object in a sentence. If you remember, so far we've had the nominative, which showed the person or thing doing the action. Then we had the accusative, that showed the person or thing the action was being done to. What the dative shows is the person, and it usually is a person, or at the very least an animal, that is indirectly impacted by the action. That possibly sounds more convoluted than it needs to, so I'm going to move straight on to the example I learnt the dative with, the verb geben, to give. This verb is nice because it acts the same way in both English and German. It needs three nouns or pronouns with it. First of all, you need a nominative, the person doing the giving. I'm going to pick he or er as it is in German. Next, I need an item to be given. This is our direct object, or accusative. It's the answer to the what question. What does he give? And in my example, the answer is the book, das Buch. So, where does the indirect object come in? It's the final bit I haven't told you yet. It's who he gives the book to. In my example, to me, which in German in the dative is mir. So, my whole sentence in German is, er gibt mir das Buch, or in English, he gives me the book. I could also have phrased my English sentence, he gives the book to me. The dative in German often covers a sense of to somebody, like the to me in, he gives the book to me. In fact, it not only covers it, in most cases it replaces it, and it's actually wrong to put it in. Er gibt das Buch zu mir doesn't work in German. You have to say, er gibt mir das Buch. There are a lot of other words that either can or must take a dative as well as an accusative, some of which match the English pretty well. For instance, to lend, er leiht mir das Buch. He lends me the book. To recommend, er empfiehlt mir das Buch. He recommends the book to me. To pass, er reicht mir das Buch. He passes me the book. To show. Er zeigt mir das Buch. He shows me the book. To send. Er schickt mir das Buch. He sends me the book. To sell. Er verkauft mir das Buch. He sells me the book. To take. Er nimmt mir das Buch weg. He takes the book away from me. Note that he takes the book away from me, not to me in English. In fact, the dative can generally be used to express a sense of for me or for you, etc. For instance, er schrieb mir seine Adresse auf, meaning he wrote his address out for me. Or the sentence, ich backe dir einen Kuchen, I'm baking you a cake. Just a word of warning though, the dative won't always be a person. Sometimes it can be a thing as well. For instance, he infers that from the book. Er entnimmt es dem Buch, where book is in the dative. Another set of verbs that take the dative in German are verbs about speaking to or communicating with someone. So, for instance, ich erzähle ihm eine Geschichte. I tell him a story. Ich schreibe ihm einen Brief. I am writing him a letter. Ich befehle ihm etwas zu tun. I order him to do something. Ich sage ihm. I tell him. Incidentally, sagen can also be used with zu instead of just with the dative, but when it's used with zu it means to say to rather than to tell, as it means when it's just followed by a dative. So for instance, sie sagte zu ihm means she said to him, whereas sie sagte ihm means she told him. And it gets used in all the same places English uses say to or said to instead of tell or told. However, as I said in my episode about the accusative, there are also some verbs, ones which you'd expect to take just an accusative, which actually take a dative instead. There's actually quite a lot of them, so I'm only going to give you a list of the ones I think come up most frequently, starting with the ones I found myself using and hearing most often. So here we go. Helfen, which means to help. For example, ich helfe dir, I help you. Folgen which means to follow, for example, 
Ich folge dir. I follow you. Gehören, which means to belong to. For example, es gehört dir. It belongs to you. Wehtun, which means to hurt. For example, es tut mir weh. It's hurting me. Danken, which means to thank. For example, ich danke dir. I thank you. Both trauen and vertrauen, which both mean to trust. For example, ich traue dir. I trust you. And ich vertraue dir. Also, I trust you. Glauben, which means to believe. For example, ich glaube dir. I believe you. Ähneln, which means to look like. For example, ich ähnle dir. I look like you. Gratulieren, which means to congratulate. For example, ich gratuliere dir. Passen, which means to fit. For example, es passt dir gut. It fits you well. And finally, schaden, which means to harm. For example, es schadet dir. It's harming you. Another key place where you use the dative is after certain prepositions. This means that the noun or pronoun after your preposition takes the dative, as do any accompanying adjectives. The prepositions that are used either only or mainly with the dative are aus, which means out of or made of, depending on the context, außer, which means except or except for, by, which doesn't translate simply into English, but is generally to do with location and can mean by or at, or during or chez, like the French chez moi. Dank, which means thanks to, and which is sometimes used with the genitive instead of the dative, particularly when referring to plurals. Gegenüber, which means opposite. Mit, which means with. Nach, which means after or according to. Seit, which means since. Von, which means from. And zu, which means to. There are also a number of prepositions which can take either the accusative or the dative. These are an, which means on, as in on the side of, auf, which means on, as in on top of, entlang, which means along, hinter, which means behind, in, which means in, neben, which means next to, über, which means over or above, unter, which means under, vor, which means in front of or before, and zwischen, which means between. As I said last time, the difference between whether these take the accusative or the dative depends on whether these are expressing motion or location, and I'll talk more about that in my episode on prepositions. One final key place I need to mention where the dative can be used is in referring to parts of the body. German doesn't particularly like using possessive pronouns such as my or your with body parts, so it tends to stick a dative personal pronoun in the sentence instead when it wants to express ownership. So although you can say ich wasche meine Hände, I wash my hands in German, what you'll actually often hear is ich wasche mir die Hände, which literally means I wash me the hands. She cuts my hair is literally Sie schneidet meine Haare. But you'll often hear, Sie schneidet mir die Haare, which literally means, She cuts me the hair. If you're an advanced learner and needs to use one of these in an exam, I recommend using the one with the dative, as it's not widely known amongst non native speaking German teachers or examiners that it is actually okay to say either in German. So, how do you recognize the dative? Well, as I'm pretty sure you've spotted, one key thing it changes is personal pronouns. All of these are different from the nominative form, and most of them are also different from the accusative form. So you get mir, meaning me, dir, meaning you, informal singular, ihm, meaning him or it, and covering both masculine and neuter nouns, ihr, meaning she or it, and covering just feminine nouns, euch, meaning you, informal plural, uns, meaning us, and ihnen, 
meaning them when it's written with a lowercase i, and meaning you, formal singular and plural, when it's written with a capital letter. Notice that in the dative, the German word for her, ihr, finally becomes different from the German word for them, ihnen, with a lowercase i, and you formal, ihnen, with a capital I. In the nominative and accusative, all three of those words are simply z every time. However, in case you were thinking that personal pronouns were going to be easier to tell apart in the dative, the word for him and the word for it become the same, as both of them are now im. This is mimicked in determiners, that's words like the, a, and my. So, like im ends in m, dative masculine and neuter determiners all end in em. So the masculine and neuter form of the is dem. The masculine and neuter form of a is einem. No is keinem. My is meinem, etc. And no other German determiners end in em. So if you come across a determiner that does, then you know you're looking at a masculine or neuter dative. The feminine determiners also mimic the personal pronouns. So, like ihr, all end in r. So, the is der, this is dieser, a is einer, my is meiner, no is keiner, etc. Slightly confusingly, these endings are repeated all over the place in German determiners. So, dative feminines are the same as masculine nominatives for any determiner that doesn't have an ein in it. So, der, the, dieser, this, and jeder, every, could all be either nominative masculine or dative feminine determiners. But you see a difference between all the ones with an ein in them. So ein, mein, and kein are all nominative masculine determiners, and einer, meiner, and keiner are all the equivalent dative feminine determiners. The dative plural determiners are a bit of an exception. All the way along until now, all of our plural determiners have been the same as the feminine determiners, but that's not the case in the dative. Here, although our feminine ends in an er, our dative plurals all end in en, so you get den, keinen, meinen, etc. If you're thinking that those dative plurals sound familiar, it's because they are. They're precisely the same as masculine accusative singular determiners, which all also end in en. So adjectives. Things are fairly simple here. When there's no determiner, they all end in the same two letters the determiner would have. em for masculine and neuter, er for feminine, and en for neuter. And when there is a determiner, all dative adjectives simply end in en, irrespective of gender or number. In fact, the dative has strong links with the letter n. Not only do all its plural determiners and adjectives end in it, but dative plural nouns also gain an n or en on the end if they don't already have one, unless the normal plural ended in an s, as that would just be too difficult to pronounce. This is simply the impact that the dative has on plural nouns, and intermediate and advanced learners should try and remember to add those n's in. The dative also used to put an e on the end of a lot of masculine and neuter nouns in the singular, but this practice has largely fallen out of use and now you only really see it in a few fixed expressions, such as im Falle das, meaning if, or zu Hause, meaning at home. I won't go into them all now, as these tend to be sufficiently common expressions that you just find yourself picking them up once you know what to look out for. It's rather like the phrase to whom it may concern, which is one of the few places left where almost all native English speakers would still use whom instead of who. So, to sum up, the dative case generally marks the person or thing indirectly impacted by an action. Verbs which take a dative very often also take an accusative. For instance, geben, to give, er gibt mir das Buch, he gives me the book. Typically, the dative covers a sense of doing something to or for someone, and you will quite often see the words to or for in English, where German simply uses a dative. However, there are some verbs where the verb simply takes a dative in German, such as helfen, to help, and glauben, to believe. And there's no logic I can make out as to why these should be considered an indirect object, 
it's simply a quirk of the German language that you have to use a dative with these verbs. You'll also find the dative after certain prepositions and used instead of possessive pronouns when referring to body parts. You'll recognise masculine and neuter personal pronouns and determiners, as all of these end in M or EM. Feminine ones end in R or ER, and plural determiners end in EN. As to the adjectives, when there's no determiner, they have the same ending as the determiner would have had, but when there is a determiner, they all end in EN. Intermediate and advanced learners, don't forget that dative plurals gain an N or EN on the end, unless they already ended in an N or an S. Beginners, you should probably mainly focus on the fact that the dative form of ich is mir and the dative form of du is dir. Everything else you can learn later. Well, that's it for this time. If you'd like to see a transcript of this episode or relevant tables, you can visit my website at sites.google.com slash site slash German Grammar Pod. If you'd like to contact me, you can email me at germangrammarpod at yahoo.co.uk. You can also subscribe to the German Grammar Pod podcast that these videos originated from through iTunes or by visiting germangrammarpod.blogspot.com. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, then click the subscribe button below this video. Next time is the genitive, which is much easier than the dative, so the hard part's over now. So, thanks for listening, and until next time, goodbye.